Hello everyone, today there was an announcement on BoardGameGeek that new maps are coming to Ark Nova. I say new maps, but they're more like alternative maps, which is what they're being called. These are just the standard maps 1 to 8 that you know, but they've had slight variations done to them. So today we're going to have a look at the changes, see what's been changed and figure out why, and also the strategic implications of all this. If you do want to try out the new maps, just scroll down here on Board Game Arena and select alternative maps. Map number 1, Observation Tower. So looking at the original map and the alternative map, the first thing you notice is that the observation tower has just teleported to the other side of the map. Other than that it looks kind of similar, so why would they do this? One of the biggest problems that original observation tower had was the division between rock and water. Normally you want to start building around the tower as early as possible to get the extra appeal, but if you have a water animal you're just extremely sad most of the time. But with the alternative map this is no longer a problem. There's a lot of space around the tower, there's still four hexes, but you can now easily fit two five sizes next to it touching both rock and water. On original observation tower you'd nearly always start in the top left corner of the map to touch the tower. Here I think it's going to be fairly similar. I think most of the time you're going to see a size 2 or size 3 or even size 4 or 5 here in the bottom right corner. Although with this draw a card spot on the floor, don't be surprised if you see some empty petting zoos here or even some sponsor buildings to draw a card. It's going to also be common to see some sponsor buildings on the one reputation spot. I think zoo school fits perfectly here. Get your classic 5 reputation in round 1 play for an upgrade. But this time you can do it and still touch the tower, whereas on old observation tower it's very tricky to like navigate through here. Because the water is more spaced apart in the alternative map, Hydrologist got a pretty major buff. Not only do you get 4 more money if you cover all the spots, but you also want to cover these spots earlier because they're actually around the tower now. Geologist now gives you more money, but I think it got a pretty major nerf. For the opposite reason of Hydrologist, now all the rocks are on the left hand side of the board apart from the four around the tower, and you really don't want to be covering these until later in the game, and the earlier in the game it is, the more important that money is. Archaeologists have stayed the same, there are still five spots around the edges of the map, which is still above average. Being able to proc archaeologists five times is very very strong. Native farm animals also looks amazingly good on the alternative version. What I'm seeing here is like an easy way to get roughly nine or ten appeal, but then all this open area that's connected for like two or three endgame shields. So overall I'd say Observation Tower got a pretty massive buff. Personally I think it was already decently strong. I know it's got a lot of hate, some people consider it the weakest map, but I've never really thought that to be the case. It would honestly not surprise me if map 1A became the strongest out of all the alternative maps. Map 2, Outdoor Areas. I think looking at it immediately there are two noticeable changes. The first one that catches the eye is the giant rock in the middle here. So one of the common complaints on original outdoor areas was that it's very hard to play large animals with rock requirements. You basically only have this like five size here to do it. But now with the addition of another rock near the tower you can do pretty easily size 4, size 4, size 5, whatever. You're a lot more flexible. The second noticeable change is oh god they've locked up the partner zoo. It used to be very common to start here with size 2 into size 2, get partner zoo like third turn, fourth turn. This is no longer an option, plus they've made it even harder to get it around the bottom way. Plus they've also moved the reputation spot, so instead of your rep being here it's now down here. They've also changed the player sponsor for money spot, so we could see a lot of openings where you build a size 2 or size 3 player sponsor for money, looking at things like meerkat den or okapi stable to fit through here, that's a nice way of getting the partner zoo very early. So yeah actually pretty huge okapi stable buff here. In terms of new starting position, I think it'll still be fairly common to see players start on the left. First animal there, upgrade build in round 2, get partner zoo that way. But if you do have a water animal, it's pretty viable to start down here as well. And of course top right if you do have a sponsor that you want to play. In terms of rewards on the map, they've actually removed an X token. So there used to be an X token next to the tower, that's just completely gone now. And they have made archaeologist a lot weaker. It used to be probably the best map for archaeologist because you have one, two, three border spaces to get free partner zoos. Now that's only down to two, which I mean is still great. Two partner zoos is nothing to uh, joke about. Hydrologist is mostly the same. 17 is pretty below average, but still a decent sponsor. Geologist got a small buff as well, giving 22 money if you cover all your rocks. The main issue is that everything's just so far away. Also worth noting there are now five build two spots on new outdoor areas instead of the old four. 
Overall, I'd say outdoor areas has become much, much weaker. Just denying early access to this partner zoo on the floor hurts a lot of early game strategies, like round one upgrades. And even just removing the X token from the middle, I think is a pretty big deal. I'm not sure how it's going to stack up against all the other alternative maps, but I would pretty comfortably put this in the bottom half of them in terms of strength. Map 3, Silver Lake. Very noticeable change in that the lake has moved about two hexes to the right, and this is a very welcome change. Most people already know, but the reason for this was that Archaeologist on original Silver Lake was just completely busted. But Archaeologist on map 3A has been hammered into the ground. There's only three rewards touching a border, compared to previously there being seven. Old Silver Lake also had two reputation spots on the floor, but now that's been nerfed down to just one. Everything else aside from that is the same in terms of rewards. Most are in similar positions too, although there's very juicy double card draw right next to each other here, so that could be very interesting early game. There are now only three build two spots instead of five on the old version, but they seem to be in much more annoying places. Seems like a real nightmare trying to navigate Silver Lake A without upgraded build. In terms of starting positions, used to be very common to start in the bottom left corner. I expect we're going to see that continue. Sometimes you may want to start at the top for the reputation, but not if you have a rock or water animal, I guess. Hydrologist got a small nerf, but it's still going to be very powerful on this map, mostly because it's the same case as before. When you're building around the lake, you're actually gaining money during your build actions. It allows you to stay in rounds longer. Geologist got a pretty nice buff. Gives you some more money, but more importantly, the rocks are more centralized to the lake. Means you're more encouraged to build around this area earlier in the game. And native farm animal seems a lot better. It looks very easy to cut off this area for a quick 9 or 10 appeal. That wasn't really an option on old Silver Lake because the lake was so close to the edge. Overall, I'd say that Silver Lake got hit pretty hard. It's always going to be a strong map because of the money and the determination ability, but Archaeologist is no longer a free win, and removing one of the reputations is actually a pretty big deal. So I think it will still be in the top half of the maps in terms of strength, but definitely not number one. Commercial Harbour. At first glance, not much has changed. All the water and rock layout is exactly the same. But I think there are three pretty interesting differences. First one that caught my eye is that this times two is now open on the right hand side. I really like that change. I think it opens up a lot of doors tactically. There are some very rare situations where you might even want to start on the right hand side of the map for an early times two on sponsors or something. But even though it's not going to be that common, I like that the option is open. Second noticeable difference is that the reputation has moved from here to here. It's just swapped with the card draw spot. That's going to make it very tricky on knowing where to start. Now you really have to decide, do you want the early one reputation or do you want to connect to the harbour? Because you won't be able to do both. Then the other changes are the five money is being removed, but it's been replaced by two card draws, which thematically I really like for this map. This map is all about selling cards, so instead of getting five money, why don't we just give you two extra cards that you can sell if you want. I think that does make map 4a a lot more powerful, and I believe it also means that in 90% of your games you're going to want to start in the bottom left area. Having access to 4 early card draw plus the harbour seems way too powerful to miss out on. One of the X tokens is also gone and has been replaced with a player sponsor for money. I think that's also a pretty big buff to the map. You have something here that gives you a lot of early game tempo giving you a whole action for a bit of money. And then you also have the times 2 which is incredible late game tempo. Hydrologist, Geologist and Archaeologist have not changed, the map has not changed. For Archaeologist there's still 3 rewards on the edge of the map. And Archaeologist is still pretty broken on this map, being able to get 3 times 2 actions is actually insane. After the changes to outdoor areas in Silver Lake, I'm going to say that Commercial Harbour is now the best Archaeologist map. In terms of overall strength, I could see map 4A being top 3 out of the new maps for sure. The times 2 alone has always made this map pretty good, but now that a lot of the other strong maps have been hammered down a little bit, I think this one stands out as being one of the best. Map 5, Park Restaurant. It looks a bit funnier now. The restaurant used to be wearing a hat above its head and now it's sort of naked. All the rewards on the floor are still the same, but they've been moved around a little bit. The rock and water has been moved around. I like that they've opened up this 5 money. There used to be a build 2 that was sort of annoyingly in the way, but now you can start down here and work your way up to the park restaurant. The most notable difference is that the map seems much more wide open now. It used to be very narrow around the restaurant, but now you have space for a size 4. Five touching the restaurant up here, you get a size 5 underneath it. The upgraded build spots have been moved out of these very annoying places and they've been shifted to the corners of the map. So I think this is now going to be maybe the best map for not upgrading build because you have so much space for large enclosures 
and these operated build icons are just not in the way for anything that you want to do. This is also the map that gives you a unique conservation project reward of an aviary or a reptile house. And with these upgraded build symbols going to the corner, they've actually left a nice room for reptile house up here and aviary down here, which has always been pretty normal but now there's like dedicated spots for them. In terms of starting spots, I really love how open this is. I think you can legitimately make a case to start in five different spots depending on what you need. Hydrologist has got a small nerf, but it's mostly the same. Still very good value on Park Restaurant. Geologist actually got a small buff in return. 27 is equivalent to original ice cream piles, which is really insane value for a card. This one is probably the hardest to judge on how it's going to stack up with all the other alternative maps. The original was always considered to be one of the weaker ones. I think with all the open area now it's got a slight buff. I still have a feeling it's going to be in the bottom half of them. Research Institute. This is another one where the layout of all the rocks in the water has stayed exactly the same, but I like how they've moved all the rewards around. Now you actually really have to think about where you're going to start on this map. Previously it was very common to start in the right over the money or the reputation, or if you need a card draw you start there, and you're still reasonably close to the university. Occasionally you start on the left to get the 5 money and be close to the tower, but now it's a lot more dynamic. The right is always going to be strong just to get the, to the university as quickly as possible, and if the display is particularly good, you're always happy to start over the draw a card spot, but this has to be the most annoying upgraded build spot on any map. Early game money is huge, and I think you can make a real argument for starting down the bottom of the map now. It's not only 5 money, it's 10 money really close together. Then you also have the reputation and some X tokens up in the top here, so I like the fact that you really have to think about where you start instead of brainlessly going bottom right like previously. Hydrologist Geologists and archaeologists are all the same. Map has not changed. There are still three rewards on borders for archaeologists. I think overall the map has gotten slightly weaker, but a lot more interesting. Because the rewards are now all split up, it does make early game a bit more difficult, but I think the map is always going to be reasonably strong because of the university on the ground. That has not changed, and I expect Research Institute will be about middle of the pack. Map 7, Ice Cream Parlors. There have been a couple of changes here. The one that leaps out immediately is that there's now water in the top left of the map. They've just sort of swapped one rock here for a water here, they've put a rock here, they've removed the water here, which was a much needed change. The most common complaint about Ice Cream Parlors before was the fact that it's really hard to play a lot of water. It was all previously just on the right hand side of the map, which means you run out of room very quickly, and it means if you start with a water animal that you have to start on the right. But now your options are open, you can start top left or on the right. I guess the second noticeable difference is that all the kiosks are quite far apart now. It was never meant to be easy to connect them all, but now it feels really awkward to do so. It used to be very common to start in the bottom right, then by the time you put your kiosk here you're basically already at the next kiosk. And then with your next build action in round 2 or 3, you're at the last kiosk with one build action. But now, I don't know, you start a size 3 here, you get your kiosk here, you have to go the sort of opposite direction to hit this kiosk, and then it takes more than a build action to get across the map here. So I think it's a slight nerf for the map, but to be honest, Ice Cream Piles was one of the strongest maps anyway, so maybe it was needed. Another noticeable difference is that the player sponsor for money spot has gone from the middle of the map to the edge which does open up a lot more interesting possibilities. The kiosk and the reputation spot here have also swapped around. In fact, it could be common to see something like a size 3 here and a kiosk here to get the reputation, but I think you could easily be justified in starting bottom right or right as well. Even top now if you want an early card draw. Very viable. The other thing missing is this clever is just completely gone. There were 13 rewards on the floor, now there's only 12, which I think is very reasonable. Uh, 13 has always been very high for a map. Hydrologist is still god awful on this map. I think there's very few reasons to actually pick it. Geologist though is still amazing. In the alternative version you lose one potential money, but 27 or 26 is still way above average for the maps. Geologist is a lock here pretty much in any starting hand. Ice Cream Piles has always been strong for a number of reasons. Firstly the extra kiosks you get, just a ton of extra income. Secondly just the amount of rewards on the floor. So that's been changed to 12, but compared to something like Research Institute that we just saw, Research Institute only has 9 compared to Ice Cream Parlor's 12. Plus also the fact that I think the conservation reward of pouching is insanely strong, and then also the last worker giving you 2 conservation points. It's not really a surprise that we see most of the fastest 2 player games be on Ice Cream Parlor's. So they did remove 1 reward, but I think the water being up here means it's got a slight buff, plus the fact that it still has 2 reputation spots when Silver Lake had 1 removed. I think we'll see Ice Cream Parlor's continue to be in the top 2 or 3 maps. And finally, Hollywood Hills. This one's just very funny to me. They basically said, what if we took this rock and this water 
and swap them around, and that's what they did, which is like a lot of the other maps before. It used to be very annoying that all the rocks are down here and all the water is up here. Now with these two being switched, you have a bit more flexibility with when you're playing your rock and water animals in the early game and in the late game. It means there's more spots for your bird aviary or reptile house. So yes, a much needed change. Few of the reward locations have been moved around, but most interesting is that they've just completely added one reputation on the floor. So now it has two reputation spots. Look, they're not exactly the easiest to start with because you generally do want to cover your H's reasonably early, but just having an extra reputation spot there is pretty big. I guess another pretty big positional change is the fact that this H and card draw are touching now. It means if you do start with kind of a mediocre hand, your first move of the game you can just build a size 2 and get two new cards immediately. In terms of starting spots, I expect the most common will be around here, but you could definitely see starting in the top if you need the early reputation, also starting top left if you need the money, or even starting sort of bottom center to get two early H's looks reasonable as well. Hydrologist is slightly better because of the water being moved away. 21 money is a great return, and on a map where you're getting more sponsor cards and in turn sponsor buildings, it is easy to fill up your map, which means you get the most value out of Hydrologist. Geologist is similar to, not as good as Hydrologist. However, the rocks are generally what you want to cover early, so I mean even getting 13 early money is great. And Archaeologist actually got a buff. There are now 5 rewards on the border compared to previously being 4. More of a balancing thing as well. Hollywood Hills has been regarded as one of the weaker maps, making Archaeologist stronger on a map that you're more likely to get it kind of thematically makes sense. This is another tricky one to say how it's going to stack up against all the new maps. This has got significant buffs while a lot of the others have been nerfed, but I think the biggest thing with this map is just the variance. If the sponsors you get from the H's are bad, then it's a really hard map to play on, but if the sponsors you get are good, then it's very easy to sort of run away with a victory. But yeah, those were my thoughts on the eight alternative maps. Hope this has been helpful, and see you guys next time.